all the time. Grace and peace. There we go. Amen. God has a word for us today. But before we get into it, let us have a word of prayer. Go ahead and bow your heads with me, would you? Father God, we just thank you today, Lord. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor and glory. Father, you and you alone are worthy of our praise, Father God. And so, Lord, we just thank you. And we glorify you today. Lord, I would just ask that you have your way, Father God. That you lead and guide, Father God. As we approach your word, Father God. Lord, I pray for the people today that they came with ears to hear, hearts to receive. What thus the Lord would say to us today. So, Father, we just ask now that you have your way. We ask it all now. In the precious name of Jesus, let the church say amen, amen. and amen. And just before I start, Pastor, thank you for the privilege to come again before the people and preach what God has put on my heart. Amen. How many of y'all know that God is a God of abundance? God is a God of abundance. That word abundance means great supply. How many of y'all know that God is not going to run out of anything? That he'll never run out of mercy. That he'll never run out of grace. And he'll never run out of comfort. Hallelujah. God is a God of abundance. That's what I want to talk about today. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go to John chapter 10. And put your finger on verse 10, and when you have it, say amen. 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 John chapter 10, verse 10. Amen. If you got it, say amen. 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 This is what it says. It says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I, this is Jesus, says, I come that they may have life and that they may have it in abundance hallelujah or abundantly amen in contrast to the thief who takes life Jesus gives life amen the life he gives right now is a life of abundance it is a life of sufficiency it is a life of overflow it is a life of more than enough hallelujah Jesus is a God of abundance, amen. And so the question I have today is what are or what aspects do we see as God, as God, as God of abundance? What, let me read that right. What aspect do we see God as a God of abundance? Let me get it right, amen. There are several aspects in the Bible by which we can see or view God as being a God of abundance. So let us focus our attention on three of them. Amen. I ain't going to be long, y'all. Y'all know me. Amen. Number one, God is abundant. He is abundant in mercy. How many of y'all know that he is an abundant God? That he's abundant in mercy. Hallelujah. All right. That's 1 Peter 1, 3 and 5. You don't have to go there, but you can write it down if you take your notes. And if you want to go there, that's fine too. Here in this passage of scripture, Peter is giving praise, honor, and glory to God for who he is and what he has done in Christ, amen, to bring men again to a living hope and an inheritance which is being, which is being reserved for us in heaven. How many of y'all know we have an inheritance? Amen. Verse 3 says, Bless be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus, who according to his abundant mercy has given us 
again, you got to get that, has given us again a li living hope through the re resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Now notice that word again. See, <clears throat> and see, <clears throat> excuse me, let me get a drink. Notice that word again. He brings us again to a living hope, amen, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. Notice that word again. It indicates that this is not the first of God's intentions, amen, to bring men to a living hope. So the question that comes up in my mind is when was the first time, when was the first time that God had these intentions to bring us to a living hope, amen. And what I discovered is that it was with Adam and Eve, amen. God, God's intention, God's intentions, his hopes, and his desires were that Adam and Eve would obey him and live eternally with him, but they chose to disobey God, and the results was sin and death. See, eternal life was lost, amen. Men, men's true identity was lost. Communication with God was lost. Relationship, fellowship with God was lost. But thanks be to God, amen, for his abundance of mercy, amen. Amen. Working through the Lord Jesus Christ on our behalf to bring us again like the Bible says, bring us again to a living hope. Jesus said in Matthew 18 and 11, for the Son of God has come to save that which was lost. Amen. So now let me give you some scripture here real quick. Chronicles 16 and 34 says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures. What? forever amen amen psalm 66 and 20 says blessed be the god which has not turned away my prayers nor his mercy from me amen amen psalms 105 says for the lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures for all generation amen psalms 94 and 18 says uh, says, when I said my foot slipped it, thy mercy, O oh God, held me up. See, if you feeling like sometime your feet is about to fall away out from under, un, out from under you, if you feel like you about to slip and fall, or if you have fall, I want you to know that God has some mercy. Amen. God will pick you up with his mercy and he'll bring you back in and then he'll give you some grace to keep you from falling amen how many of y'all know that amen 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 not only is he abundant in mercy but he is also abundant in grace how many of y'all know that he is abundant in grace hallelujah romans 5 17 says for if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the, excuse me, through the one Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death reigned in all people. But the good news is, is that the abundance of God's grace, amen, through the Lord Jesus Christ is more powerful, amen, than the reign of sin and death. As a matter of fact, Romans 6 and 14 says that sin shall not have dominion over you, amen, because you're not under law, but you're under grace, amen. Romans 5, Romans chapter 5, verse 20, Paul says that the law was introduced in order to increase wrongdoing. But where sin increased, God's grace increased much more. In other words, in other words, Paul 
wants believers or he wants people to know that it does not matter how much sin increase. It does not matter how much, how, how great or how numerous sin might be or become, hallelujah. It doesn't matter how far you have fallen down or how low you have sunk to the bottom, grace, the grace of God, hallelujah, is greater, amen. How many of y'all believe that? Amen. The grace of God is plentiful, hallelujah, and powerful enough, amen, through the life, through the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, amen, to forgive every sin, past, present, and future, amen. And not only that, but to raise us up to a place of ruling and reigning with Christ. Amen. Over, over sin. Amen. Ruling and reigning. Amen. Over temptation. Over the devil's temptation. How many of y'all want to rule and reign? Amen. Ruling and reigning over the flesh, the flesh, amen. Ruling and reigning in our households, amen. See, ruling and reigning in our marriages. Ruling and reigning over our kids, amen. Ruling and reigning in our finances, amen. Ruling and reigning on our jobs. Ruling and reigning in our in our in Christ and in our character, in our attitudes, amen, towards other people. How many of y'all know we are called to reign? Amen. We are called to reign with Christ. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. So how do we receive the abundance of God's grace? Amen. First Peter 5 and 7 says, God said, resist. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, amen, that he may exalt you in due time, amen. And that's just simply us saying to God, not my will, Lord, but your will be done, amen. That's simply us saying to God, your agenda must be first, my agenda must be last, amen. And then not only that, but we are to cast our cares on him because he cares for us. And I can tell you, there is nobody, and I mean nobody, who can care for us the way God cares for us. Amen. Amen. I'm getting down through there, y'all. Amen. Not only is God's abundant, not only is he abundant in mercy and grace, but he is also abundant in comfort. How many of y'all need some comfort? Everybody needs some comfort sometime. Amen? Amen. Especially in the time that we're living in now, everybody can use some comfort. Amen. Second Corinthians uh, 1, 3, and 4 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. And listen to what it says here. And it says, The God of all comfort, amen, who comforts us in all our tribulations, our troubles, that we may be able to comfort those who are in trouble with the comfort which, which, with which we ourselves are comforted by God. See, the ideal is as God comforts me, in my trouble, amen, I need to give back. I need to pay that forward, amen, amen. When God comforts me and he comes and he picks me up and he lifts up my head and I see somebody else who look like they heavy, amen, I need to do to them what God did to me and help them, amen. That's what we supposed to do, amen, amen. God is abundant in comfort. He is the God of all comfort. God will comfort us in time of trouble and affliction. He will comfort us in time of hardship and pain. Amen. God will comfort us in times of suffering and discouragement. Amen. God's, God comforts us for two reasons. Amen. First, he comforts us because he loves us as a human father loves his children. Amen. How I many of y'all love y'all kids? 
Amen. That's how God loves us. Amen. 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 Secondly, God, God comforts us so that we might share the comfort with others who are in trouble. Just as Jesus gives us comfort and blessing, so we must comfort and bless others. A good example of this is found in the 12 steps of recovery, which says, having had a spiritual experience as the result, as the result of working these steps, it says, we try to carry this message to others and practice these principles in all our affairs. Now, the scriptural principle of, the, of that same step says, brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him, and it says gently. Don't be trying to, you want to help people out, but you got to go to them gentle. Don't be going to them as if you're above falling in the same situation they fell into. Amen? But we go and we lift them up gentle. That's how Jesus would do it. Amen? But it says, <clears throat> but watch yourself or you also may be tempted. That's Galatians 6 and 1. Amen. God, and this, in conclusion here, I told you I was going to be done quick. In conclusion, God is a God of abundance. He is, a, he is abundant in mercy. He is abundant in grace. Hallelujah. And God is abundant in comfort. Amen. All of these are the attributes and the gifts of God, and they belong to us. Amen. And we can go and get his mercy. Amen. When we mess up and he'll give us some grace to help us from keep from to help us keep from messing up. Amen. And he'll give us comfort. Amen. God bless you. Word first. I love y'all. Amen. Or come on, stand to your feet. Come on, y'all stand to your feet. Please.